Hey everyone, my name is Kirk. I'm a math computer science student here at Memorial University in St. John's, Newfoundland. And today we're gonna to be making some butterflies with chromatography. So if you'd like to follow along with today's experiment, ask a caregiver and gather the following materials. So first, you're gonna need a bowl of water, some napkins or a paper towel, some markers, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that these are washable markers. You're also gonna need some tissue for a butterfly, and now I'm actually using a coffee filter, but a regular uh, tissue will work as well. And I've just cut my coffee filter into a square. We're gonna need scissors and tape, and finally, we're also gonna need either a pencil, a craft stick, or even a uh, pen like I'm using here. Have you ever gotten ink markings or markings from a washable marker on your hand or skin? How'd you get rid of them? What about markers from a permanent marker? Is there anything different between a permanent marker and a washable marker? What do you think? Well, washable markers can wash with just water. Permanent markers can't be washed with water. Now, this is because washable markers are actually called water soluble, which means they dissolve in water. When something dissolves, the material breaks down and it mixes with a liquid. Permanent markers are water insoluble, which means it does the exact opposite. It can't break down in water. And this is exactly why water soluble markers can be washed away, but your permanent markers are there for good. So today we're gonna to be using our water soluble markers to make a butterfly. Our first step to making a butterfly is to use our markers to decorate two different sides of our square piece of paper or tissue. So I've already gone ahead and done this. I've used blue and green as you can see and I've decorated it not at the edge of each side but sort of in, in towards the middle um, and I've separated it evenly on both sides so we get a nice even butterfly. I've also gone ahead and made different thicknesses uh, just so we get a different pattern throughout our process. It's important to note that I only colored one side of the tissue but it did bleed through and that's where our handy dandy napkins come in just in case you make a mess you can wipe it right off. So go ahead and color your own tissue and you can use all kinds of colors whatever you like as well as different thicknesses just make sure to keep it away from the edge and away from the very middle. To get the color to the center of the tissue we're going to be using a process called chromatography. Chromatography is a technique that scientists use to separate mixtures. Today we're going to be scientists and separate our own mixture of ink. This is going to create different patterns throughout our paper. In chromatography there are two different parts. There are a stationary part as well as a mobile part. Stationary meaning that it doesn't move and mobile of course meaning that it does move. In this case we have tissue and water. So what do you think is stationary and what do you think is mobile? So water is mobile and our tissue or coffee filter is stationary. The ink on our tissue paper is what we're gonna be investigating today. So let's see if our ink is gonna move. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put one side of our tissue into the water and we're gonna be careful not to let the water hit the ink. Now if it does, that's perfectly fine. It just means you're gonna to have to get a new fresh uh, vat of water before you start the other side. We're gonna hold it just like this, nice and vertical, and we're gonna tip the very bottom of our paper into the water. So I'm gonna go ahead and dip mine and we're gonna leave this for one or two minutes or until we see that the water stops moving. And as you can see, it did move up our tissue paper and this is because the mobile part, the water, is traveling up our stationary part, the tissue. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip over and do the exact same thing on the other side, but as you can see, my water's pretty dirty, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch that out for a fresh one and get the other side done. So, why did our ink move? As we mentioned earlier, we're using markers that are water soluble. The ink dissolves in the water or mixes with the water and then travels through the tissue. But does all of your ink move? Are the different colors reacting differently? Go ahead and try some different color combinations and see if you get any different results. So if you look at mine, it actually looks like the blue ran more than the green did and both faded pretty dramatically. So maybe with different markers, they would the color would stay a bit better. The markers I used are ultra clean washable markers, so I think they dissolve a little bit better in water than standard markers. So you might see that some colors can dissolve and some markers don't really dissolve at all, so they don't really move very far in your tissue. The colors that dissolve more easily will flow through your tissue a lot more than the ones that don't. So one way that chromatography can be helpful for scientists is that they can use this to break down a liquid and see what its different parts are. So after both wings are done, you might want to take your paper towel and just give it a quick dry. Now, to make our butterfly, we're going to take the two sides that are not colored in the center, and we're going to 
pinch them together just like this. It's going to look just like a bow tie and you should have two triangles on each side. Next we're going to take a piece of tape and tape the center of our butterfly. So get your butterfly nice and even and then put a piece of tape right in the center. And now if you'd like you can make the body of your butterfly using a craft stick or a pen or pencil or whatever you have lying around and tape that right to the center. And just like that now we have our butterfly. So now that you know how to make a butterfly go ahead and try to make a ton more. Try different colors and see what new combinations you get and see what the colors do. Maybe even try different markers if you have them around. What you might find is even though the different markers might be from the same brand or kind, they're going to react differently to the water and you're going to come out with a new different butterfly. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you had a ton of fun making butterflies with chromatography. And with your parents' permission, I'd love to see your butterflies posted on our social medias. So thanks for joining us today and we'll see you next time.